Well, I think we are at a place that we can get started here. I see we've got the total number of participants is over the number that uh, accepted the invite. So we'll get going. Um, just want to say thank you guys for taking the time out of your day. And I want to give you the big picture of what we're looking to do here. And um, we'll just do it. so what we're looking to do is give you guys just a basic roadmap of the season. Uh, we understand that this year things are a little bit different than they've been in obviously last year and then in some years in the past. And when we started looking at it, there were a lot of questions that came up internally. And so we thought, well, if there's questions from us internally, there's definitely going to be some questions from you guys as to, okay, I start at the open and I win the CrossFit games, but what happens in the middle? So the goal is to give you guys as much information as we can right now to allow you to plan for your season and figure out how that's gonna look. Um, but obviously there's gonna be some things that we can't answer at this time. And it wouldn't be the CrossFit Games without a few surprises. So there will be some things that we won't be able to give you full details on, but the intent is that you should walk away from this with a good understanding of what's required for you to make your way through the season, okay? So what we're gonna do is I've got a little presentation I'm gonna walk you guys through. We're gonna go through the big picture first and then we'll take a look at each phase of competition and answer some, some questions about that. Um, and then at the very end, we'll open it up to any questions that you guys have. So Curtis is gonna be monitoring the chat. So if you guys have questions along the way, just drop them in the chat and Curtis will uh, kind of keep tabs on that. And if it doesn't get answered along the way, then what we'll do at the end of the discussion is circle back and field anything that, uh, that comes up, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen with you guys here. <clears throat> Give me one second. And we're going to start with a season overview. You guys just give me a thumbs up if you've got my screen there. Looking good? Okay, cool. So the overview of the season is that we're going to start in March, coming up real quick with the Open. No surprises there. That's for everybody to compete in. It's going to be $20 to sign up. The asterisk there is because in some regions this year, we have lowered the price to consider their uh, particular economy. So $20 registration with the asterisk. It's three weeks online this year and their workouts are gonna be announced weekly as they have been in the past. So not a lot of surprises there. The next stage of competition is gonna be slightly uh, different than what we've done in the past. Instead of going straight to an in-person competition from the open, this year we're gonna have uh, another stage online called the quarterfinals. And that's gonna be held April 8th through 12th. And the top 10% of each continent from the open will advance to the quarterfinals. And so that's a $50 registration fee for that competition. It's April 8th through 12th and it's online. And workout deadlines are gonna be given closer to the competition. We can't tell you exactly how that's gonna look, but it's gonna be a little different from the open in the sense that you won't have multiple days to complete an event. The timelines will be a little bit tighter um, and they'll be announced with lots of time for you guys to prep. Okay, so then moving on from there is the semifinals. And if you take a look, we've got this green color. And so the green represents an in-person competition, whereas the blue is an online competition. So now we're moving into an uh, in-person competition with the semifinals. And those are gonna be held May 24th through June 20th on four different weekends. And those are three-day competitions, they're in-person. And the fees for those registration-wise are gonna be announced after the open. So we'll, we'll get those to you guys as soon as we have them. Um, and the number of advancing athletes is gonna vary by region. If you guys take a look at the box next to it where it's got the North America times four, et cetera, that gives you the number of competitions in each area, as well as who advances from those. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail when we get to that specific stage of competition. What's kind of cool about this is that we also have the last chance qualifier. And so at those semifinal events, the athletes that do not advance but are in the top three non-advancing positions, they will automatically qualify for the last chance qualifier. So for example, in North America, the top five men and women will advance, which means places six, seven, and eight will have automatic qualification to the last chance qualifier. Okay, so that's true for every region. The top three non-qualifying spots will have that opt-in to the last chance qualifier. <clears throat> uh, a note really quickly on COVID too. We are uh, you know, doing everything possible to make sure that we have 
a competition for everybody, regardless of what's going on in the world at that time. So the dates of these competitions will not change, but the format might. So if, for example, we have COVID that does not allow us to hold one of the semifinal in-person events, the entire field of athletes from that event will have an opportunity to compete online uh, in, in a similar format to the stage one competition from last year, from the 2020 season. Okay, so that's gonna be um, a detail that we'll go into in a little bit here. So after we take the uh, semifinal, we've got 30 people from each one of those competitions competing. The top athletes are going to advance based on the region that they're in or the competition that they're at rather. And those athletes will advance to the games. And then those other athletes that we mentioned in the top three non-qualifying spots will have that last chance qualifier. And that will be another online competition. It'll be similar to the 2020 stage one format. There's a $50 registration and it'll be held July 2nd through 4th. The top two athletes from that competition will advance to the finals. And so if you're following along with the math, that means we arrive at the finals in July with 40 men and 40 women from around the world, the top 40 men and women. Okay, so that's the basic overview of the season. So what we're gonna do is take a look at each one of these blocks of competition with a little bit more detail, and then we'll circle back to any questions. So moving on to the open, a lot of this is gonna be pretty familiar. $20 registration, like we talked about, three weeks of online competition. Just like years past, we're gonna have the uh, workouts announced weekly on Thursdays at 5 p.m. PST, and then you'll have that window until Monday at 5 p.m. to submit your score. We've got a recommended equipment list here for uh, RX athletes. <clears throat> so it's one dumbbell, one barbell, and a set of bumper plates, a jump rope, a pull-up bar that allows for all of the common pull-up movements that you'd expect, and kipping. Uh, one box with a 15 by 15 uh, inch surface and some wall space. Okay, so that should be available to you guys for the RX division. Uh, as far as advancing past the open, uh, like I mentioned, the top 10% from each continent will advance and the number of eligible competitors on your continent will be established at the end of that first workout. So when registration closes at the end of the first workout, we're gonna take that number and then figure out how many of that is represented in, on your continent. And 10% of that will be eligible to advance to the quarterfinals. Your continent will be established based on your citizenship that you hold at the close of the very first open event. Okay, in order to advance to the quarterfinals, you do have to complete the workouts as RX. And just a little bit of competition hygiene, if you are expecting to move on, just like years past, record all of your workouts, even if you don't video submit your score, we will be requesting videos from the top athletes that are advancing. Okay, so just make sure that you get in the habit of, of videoing your, athlete, or your workouts. Um, over on the right here, we have a couple of prizes for the Open. So each event uh, winner will take $2,021. And then the first place finisher overall will have $15,000, second place $10,000, and so on and so forth. So eligible for some pretty cool prizes there. So that's the open, not a lot of surprises, similar format to what we've done in the past, just a few details for you guys to get ready for that competition coming up pretty quickly. So then we move on to the quarterfinals. This is the second stage, again, online. We're gonna take those 10% of each continent in advance. So this is a $50 registration. It runs April 8th through 12th. And like I mentioned, the workouts and the deadlines will be announced closer to the competition. You won't have quite as much time to do and submit your workouts, but it'll be similar in the format in the sense that you'll be able to redo workouts if you choose, but there will be some submission deadlines along the way. And we'll give you guys those details a little closer to the competition. The equipment requirements for this competition is expanded a little bit beyond the open. Okay, so now we're getting into uh, competitors that have crossed the first threshold. We're gonna expect that you guys have access to a little bit more equipment to include about 30 feet of flat space that you can cover some distance, a climbing rope, a medicine ball, two dumbbells, a rower, rings, GHD, and a squat rack. 
Okay, so make sure you guys have uh, access to that equipment if you're planning on making it into the quarterfinals. Um, for this online competition, you guys will need to provide your own judge and they must have completed the 2021 judges course. And again, a little bit of competition hygiene here. We highly recommend that you guys choose an experienced judge that will hold you accountable. You, you'd be surprised how many times we have uh, submissions that come in and you know, we have to assess a penalty and they say, well, my judge didn't say anything. And you, you look at the judge and you think, man, you're right, they didn't, but they should have. So choose a judge that you know is gonna take it seriously and, and do what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and then in addition to that, athletes must provide video of each workout, just like the open. So get in the habit of filming that and we'll, we'll provide some recommendations for best angles and things like that. Okay, so now let's take a look at how you advance past the quarterfinals. So in the open, we've already established your continent of citizenship. You've qualified from the open to the quarterfinals based on that. So that designation will stay with you during this phase. And 300 athletes total, men and women, will advance to 10 semifinal competitions. And the number of each athletes advancing is gonna be based on prior year's open enrollment. And that's the way we're gonna do this moving forward as well. So in 2022, we'll take a look at this year's enrollment and the qualifying spots will be determined based on how many competitors we have from each continent. So this year in North America, the top 120 men and women will advance. In Europe, the top 60. And in Oceania, South America, Asia, and Africa, the top 30 will advance. Okay, so now we're really starting to streamline from that big 10% number that advanced to the quarters. Now we're taking a really much smaller number out of each one of those continents and they will arrive at the semifinals for the in-person events. Okay. So now we're moving on to the semifinals. <clears throat> and these are gonna be held, like I said, uh, on four consecutive weekends starting at the end of May, May 24th, and ending in June. So overall, there's gonna be 10 three-day in-person competitions held over those four weeks. And these are gonna be independent events that have partnered with CrossFit. So what that means for you guys is that the programming for each competition will be unique, kind of like Sanctionals was uh, last year, uh, I guess 2019 when we actually had Sanctionals. <clears throat> um, but, CrossFit will vet the programming for all of those events. So they will submit their programming to us. We will verify it and make some recommendations based on what they submit. Uh, and, and we will ensure that the test is good and valid for everybody. Uh, the registration fees for those events are gonna be announced after the open. Okay, so again, these are independent events. We'll vet them and be working with them. You guys will show up to those events and compete in person. So if we take a look, the number of competitions is gonna vary based on the continent. So in North America, there will be four different semifinal competitions. In Europe, we'll have two semifinal competitions. And in the other regions, Oceania, South America, Asia, and Africa, they will have one competition each, okay? So then advancing, um, if we go down to take a look at the chart below that, in those North American competitions, again, the top five men and women will advance out of each one of those competitions. In the European competitions, the top three will advance. In Oceania, South America, Asia, the top two will advance. And in Africa, the top male and female will advance. And so that gets us 38 athletes from around the world that will advance to the CrossFit Games finals, okay? Then remember the top three non-qualifying athletes will have that last chance qualifier. Two athletes will qualify out of that, which will bring us up to 40 athletes for the games. Okay, so again, one more time on that non-qualifying aspect. If we look at the North American competitions, the top five advance, which means sixth, seven, and eighth place will automatically qualify for the last chance qualifier. If we go down to the other end of the spectrum, the uh, Africa semifinal, only the top male and female will advance, which means places two, three, and four will have that automatic qualification for the last chance qualifier. Okay, so note on the COVID considerations, a few details, like we said, 
We're going to do our best to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to compete against the field that they've qualified with. Um, so there's, there's going to be a few different ways that that works. We'll talk with the big picture first. If a competition, let's say we're in a European competition and it cannot be held due to COVID restrictions, it gets canceled. In that case, all of the athletes from that competition will then be taking place in an online event hosted by CrossFit. Um, and that will be uh, similar to the stage one 2020 games where you guys will all be competing independently but ranked against each other from that competition. We intend to make an announcement as to whether or not we're going ahead with a competition no later than three weeks prior to it. Okay, so we're gonna make every effort we can to uh, confirm that the competition is or is not happening with as much lead time for you guys. And we'll do that no later than three weeks before the competition starts. So a second scenario that can come out of that is if an athlete can't compete. So let's say that I am living in a particular region, the competition in person can be held, but I can't get there because I can't travel to the, to the region that it's being held. Either I can't get out of my country or I couldn't get back in or something like that. If that's the case, then that individual will automatically get entered into the last chance qualifier instead of participating at their semifinal, and that will be their opportunity to compete. Okay, so we're hoping that uh, by May, you know, we, we should be uh, in a good, good shape, hopefully. We're all optimistic that we'll be able to compete in person. Uh, but on the chance that we can't, we do have contingencies so that everybody gets a shot. Okay, so that's the semifinal competition. Moving on to the last chance qualifier. So this is now July 2nd through 4th. It's going to be three, content, uh, three athletes from each semifinal event. It's a $50 registration fee. It's online July 2nd through 4th. And again, it'll be very similar to the 2020 stage one competition. The equipment is going to be the same as all the uh, recommended equipment from the open and quarterfinals. So the, the list of CrossFit gear that you guys know and, and love. And the details are relatively similar. You guys will be uh, you'll need to provide a judge. They have to have experience. Choose a judge that's gonna hold you accountable and make sure you video each one of those workouts. Okay. From that competition, the top two will advance and that'll round us out to 40 that arrive at the final. Okay, so a couple of other details we wanna to provide to you guys about the season. Um, first thing here is about drug testing. Just in general, uh, we will be doing random testing throughout the year like we do every year. And just a kind of point of fact that doesn't make it out there as often as we'd like is that historically we, we drug test over 400 athletes every year. Okay, and we, we intend to continue doing that and increasing that number as we can. Um, at the semifinals, so that's the in-person competitions, all advancing athletes will be tested. And if COVID restrictions prevent the drug testing from happening immediately on site at that competition, then athletes will be tested as soon as possible following that competition. And we'll also some, uh, administer some random tests during those competitions like we've done in the past. Uh, and then again, at the CrossFit Games Finals, we'll drug test all podium athletes as well as administering random tests during that competition. So just a brief overview as to the uh, drug testing for this year. And last but not least here, we've got uh, just some best practices for you guys to consider. Um, when you guys are working through online competitions, it's really important. Again, I, I know I've said it a few times, but video all of your workouts. It really does help us out. And it, it really is the best practice for you an athlete. If you're planning to progress through the season, make sure you have a video record of all of your performances. Um, make sure that you take the time to get your video set up matching the submission guidelines and review. This is a big one. Be surprised how many people don't do it. Review your workout before you submit it. Take a look and make sure it is what it should be before you submit it. And then take that experienced judge with you and make sure that they're holding you accountable. A um, Couple of things when you guys do arrive at the in-person competitions, uh, just make sure that you start paying attention to the heat check-in times and plan to be on time. And that part of that is preparing for long competition days. I know a lot of you guys have experience with this sort of thing but just make sure that you are prepared for those competition days and ready to go when it's asked of you. 
And as always, we do have the rule book for you guys to consult if you have questions about some of the details. In addition to that, please don't hesitate to reach out to the game support team. They're always there to help you guys out if you have questions or if you need anything. Okay, so last but not least here, we've got just kind of an overview of the calendar, just so you can start to conceptualize what the season looks like at a glance. So kind of moving top to the bottom here, we've got the open, which is everybody. And then really quickly on the heels of the open, we have the quarterfinals. And that's gonna be for the top 10% from each continent. Then you guys have a bit of a gap through the end of April and, and early May. <laughs> Uh, and then the semifinals kick off. And if you take a look at the semifinals, remember, they're going to be four weeks of competition. So there will be multiple se semifinal events running on each week. Uh, then there's a short break and the last chance qualifier. And then the games kick off at the end of July. Okay, so that should give you guys kind of a sense of what it looks like uh, to compete through the season from the Open coming up in a couple of weeks all the way through to August when the games end. All right, so at this point, I'm going to stop this bad boy here and we're gonna open it up to any questions that you guys might have. Um, I think Curtis has been paying attention. Okay. Got it. Um, all right, so Tim's got a question here about the rough timeline for selecting the semifinal event once quarterfinals wrap up. And the answer is uh, as soon as possible. So if you guys are competing out of North America or Europe, uh, you know, you notice that there are going to be some additional competitions there. So four in North America and two in Europe, which means that you are going to uh, send in your, pri uh, what's the word, your preference for competition uh, once you have been confirmed as qualifying out of the quarterfinals. So the process there is you'll send in your preference. We'll take a look at those preferences. And then based on a couple of different criteria like ranking, um, the preference that you guys have uh, exhibited, your proximity roughly to that competition and some other factors, we will start seeding those events. So we'll do that as quickly as we can once we have a um, uh, ranking from the semifinals. So just a quick follow up, Buzz. So it yeah. sounds like it's not it's going to be a mix of like us picking and then like a power ranking system kind of like a little bit of both or. Correct. Yeah. The, what we're trying to avoid is everybody flocking to one semifinal. And obviously that's going to skew the competition in one direction and then skew the other competitions in a different direction. So we're trying to avoid that. Um, so we're going to take a, a couple of different factors into play there. To make sure this is fair as it can be. Cool. Oh, and uh, Curtis is telling me that I did have a bit of a typo, so sorry about that. I, uh, I think I misspoke as far as the advancing. Um, for the European competitions, uh, the top five advance out of Europe, not the top three. That was my mistake. Um, and then also and Oceania, yeah, Oceania, South America, and Asia is the top three. Sorry about that. So top five from North America, top five from Europe top three from Oceania, South America, and Asia, and then the top one out of Africa. And then Boz, another one just popped up of when will the, the uh, venue for the different competitions be announced, location. I'm gonna kick that one off to Justin. <laughs> Yeah, um, so we're working through that right now with a variety of the different semifinals. Some of them have been sanctionals in the past. Um, we're planning to announce that within the next two weeks and then trying to work with those guys very closely on um, kind of their planning and then their event horizons. So um, we know the number and uh, we'll have that before the open starts for sure. Great, and I just wanna give you guys the visual on the uh the advancement one more time, the correct one, just so we've got it here. So let me just share my screen one more time. Okay, so if you guys take a look at the semifinals competition and then just to the right of that, the top five out of North America, the top five out of Europe, 
Oceania is top three, Asia and South America is top two, and Africa is one. So that's the correct, sorry, I misspoke earlier. Okay. Uh, I got a question from Justin that says, does the leaderboard reset between the open and quarterfinals? And the answer is yes. At each stage of competition along the way, they will be a reset leaderboard. And so they are effectively, you're coming in just like it's an open, open leaderboard for each stage of that competition. Okay, so the open blank slate, quarterfinals blank slate, all the way through to the finals. Um, I have a quick question. Um, it's sort of a question, kind of a complaint, I guess. Um, so if a person, um, I'll be competing in the Oceania region, but I live in America. Um, so I know you had mentioned that if for some reason, you know, Australia is really strict right now. So they're, if that's where the semifinal is held, they're not allowing people to travel. So then we would have the option to compete um, or the last chance qualifies, correct? Yes, we're gonna take those on a case by case basis. So what we're really trying to avoid is a hard line on, you know, nope, you can't make it to your competition, you can't compete. Obviously, we're gonna take a look at the circumstances surrounding COVID. Um, the, de the default that we're gonna come back to because people are qualifying from their continent and based on their continent, the most fair way to run it is that, you know, you follow that line all the way through. And so if you are living in the United States, but a citizen of Australia, you know, we, we would prefer that the Australian competition is the one that you attend. But if it comes to May and it is impossible for you to get there or, you know, it's very prohib prohibitive, we'll take a look at that circumstance and, uh, and determine whether or not that's realistic or not. Okay, so and so that, COVID would be the only thing. So like, what about financially if a person can't get there? Do you like... Do you know what I mean? I, I know I'm not the only one affected by this. I also don't have sponsors. So what about, am I just like out of luck? Is that how that works? Yeah, again, we're gonna have to take a look at that on a case by case basis. But again, because of the way that the competition is structured based on citizenship, we can't allow just an open choice of where you'd like to compete because you're competing against other people from your region in those online competitions. So that, that makes for, the, for the most part, the answer is yes, you will be expected to compete where you are from. If there are circumstances that you can't get there, let us know, but we'll have to evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis. Then a new one just popped up from Pat Vilner, Boz. Great question. Uh, if the semifinals need to be changed online, it would be a minimum of three weeks before the event. And so the question then is, would athletes be seated by that point? And the answer is yes. Okay, we'll have all the athletes seating done before the announcement of whether those competitions are gonna go or not. So regardless of whether your competition is gonna be held online or in person, preferably in person, it'll be the same uh, athletes that you're competing against. Cool. Any other questions that we've got from you guys? All right. Great. Well, thank you guys for your time. Uh, I hope that gave you guys some insight as to what you guys can expect over the course of the season and help you prepare a little bit. Um, a couple other things I want you guys to be aware of is that we are going to start uh, creating an athlete newsletter that's gonna start coming out periodically. And that's gonna include some details on the upcoming events. It'll also take a look back at, you know, what's happened with some of these other things uh, and, and competitions that have already finalized. Uh, and all of this is an effort to try to keep you guys in the loop a little bit more as things transpire over the season. So that's that. Uh, question from Pete about when I get my judges shirt, I guess I have to uh, show up to the competitions to get those shirts, Pete. So. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I'll get some at semifinals. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's all we've got for you guys. Again, thanks for your time. Um, looking forward to seeing many of you guys out there at the various competitions we have this year. And best of luck with all of your training. Actually, quick question for you, Boz, if you have a sec. I do. 
Um, so just out of curiosity, the, what's the video review process going to look like for the quarterfinals? Because we're going to have in North America, theoretically, 10,000 people submitting scores for that workout. So there could be some tomfoolery going on at the bottom that affects the top, but they're not necessarily an actual qualifying athlete. So I guess what's the is there a plan to deal with that? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked. We, we have a, a pretty robust plan uh, that we're going to leverage a lot of staff that we have around the world um, to help review to a pretty serious depth down the leaderboard. Um, so we're going to treat this like we've treated it, uh, treated the open in the past, you know, and the open in the past where it was the basically the sole qualifying event before you got to an in-person competition, we, we did dive pretty deep down the leaderboard. And we're going to take that same strategy with the quarterfinals. So you guys, yes, there'll be a lot of review going on there. We're going to have teams placed on different continents that can get to those reviews quickly and uh, with a lot of depth. So yeah, rest assured, we absolutely have taken that into consideration. Awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Sam Briggs, looks like you've got a question there. Sam, if you want to, uh, if you want to come off mute, feel free to ask. Yeah, I kind of figured that would be easy. Um, I didn't know if I missed something at the beginning, so I was late on, but uh, cottoned on to what uh, Emma Chapman was saying. And kind of when I read the rule book, I wasn't sure, like, so you say like citizenship, but like, I know that Emma's a resident of the US, which would be the same as uh, me. So I'm classed as a permanent resident, but I've not got my citizenship. So does that mean I have to compete um, under the UK or do we fall under a gray line? That's a great question. Uh, as, as far as I know, I think we're going with citizenship. Um, so I believe it has to be citizenship as the hard line. And that's correct, Boz. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thank you guys again. If you have any final questions, oh, we got one more. So uh, Pat's asking the question about COVID considerations here. And so keep in mind, there's going to be two different scenarios. Scenario one is that the semifinal event that all 30 athletes are going to be going to gets canceled. So then those 30 athletes will compete in an online competition that parallels semifinals against one another. So that same field of 30. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is that I am competing in a, uh, a competition and the competition itself is being held, but I am restricted from getting there. I can't travel to that competition because I can't get away from my region due to COVID restrictions, or I can't get in due to COVID restrictions, something like that. I, the individual, can't make it, but the competition is still being held. In that case, the athletes at that competition will compete against each other, and I will be funneled into the last chance qualifier. And so there may be instances where, you know, there's two or three athletes in that competition affected in that way they would all compete in the last chance qualifier. So two scenarios there. Scenario one, the competition gets canceled. Everybody in that comp uh, competition group competes against each other online in the event that CrossFit hosts. Scenario number two, I, the individual, can't make it to a competition that is being held. I get funneled into the last chance qualifier in July. Last chance qualifier is gonna be lit, Pat, I agree. <laughs> I have a question if I can yeah. speak. Um, is there a proportion, like let's say North America, 10 out of the 30 athletes would not be able to make it. Does that now become like everybody who's going online or those 10 individual athletes just get pushed to the last chance qualifier? Like, is there a proportion of athletes that you will need to show up to a competition to not host it online? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something we're definitely gonna be monitoring as it draw, draws closer to the competition date. And so, like we said, if we get closer to the competition date and it looks like you know a large portion of the athletes can't make it, that's gonna be one of the triggering decisions that says, okay, we're not gonna do this competition because we don't have the depth of field that we need. 
So yes, we'll absolutely take that into consideration when we get closer to those events. Cool. Any other questions? Great, okay. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, uh, uh, hope to see you guys out there soon and best of luck with your training moving forward. We'll see you all out there.